So, morning everybody. I'm in the front wheel housing today. So, what I've done is I've got the wheel off and we've got our axle stands. We've got this axle stand under here, so supporting this side of the vehicle. Now, what I've noticed is there's lots of play and jolting on take up on drive. So, I'll just put the camera in there. So, I've taken the ring of bolts off the diff. Well, actually, that's the final drive, not the diff. The diff's inside, but. So I've taken the ring of bolts off the final drive and I've removed the prop shaft. So, so we'll go under here. I've removed the prop shaft which runs, which runs along there to the transfer box. So I've removed that and I've got the diff loose or the final drive loose. So that's all nice and loose. Now, because I can't take it out yet because I've got to take the front drive shafts out. And on the front, there is a CV joint in there. So I've got to take the, uh, the wheel off I've got to take the brake caliper off, so I'm going to take that off. And then I've got to take uh, this drive flange off, which has got a circlip in here, and then the drive shaft out, which will take the CV joint out of this end. So, let's say, <clears throat> I'm just checking to see where my wear is, because I don't know where my wear is yet. So, what I've done, in fact, shall I put the camera there, and I'll do it. There's the, the final drive flange just above here. So that's the final drive flange just here. I'm just going to turn it and hold that drive on the wheel. So look at that. That's the play in the final drive. There's quite a lot of play there, but that could be there. It could be in the final drive or the differential. It could be in the drive shaft splines, which are, just turn that, uh, which are here, or it could be in the CV joint, which is there, or oh, there, sorry, or it could be in the drive flange splines, which are here. And I can't tell where it is, but another test <clears throat> is to undo this ring of bolts here. So I've undone this ring of, this, this is the drive flange. So I've undone this ring of bolts, and you have to hold, obviously I've got the wheel off, so you have to hold a, um, where is it, I had it a second ago. You have to have a, a pry bar in here to kind of hold the wheel still, and that's on the ground. So that holds the wheel still while I take these bolts off because obviously the, the hub would spin. So I've taken the, the these bolts out, and then what I'm going to do is if we, I'll try and point the camera. There's the diff just at the top left-hand corner of the picture there. So there's the diff or the final drive casing. That's the flange for the prop shaft. I'm just going to spin this so you can see it. So see, so I'm, I'm going quite away. I've got quite a bit of play there without the final drive, prop shaft drive, moving. So I've got loads of play. And and because I've got loads of play, that's our clunk, that's our knock when we take up our, our drive on our Land Rover. So if you've got an older Land Rover, this is a 1988. Um, this could be the where your clunk's coming from, and uh, quite likely where your clunk's coming from. Now, what I've done to diagnose it is if I've taken off the front prop, prop shaft, which gives you a two-wheel drive vehicle. So I've got a two-wheel drive vehicle now, the transfer box out to the front axle has not been driven, so the clunk disappears. So I know the, the clunk is coming from this drivetrain here. Now, if these splines go here, so the, I mean, you can't see the wear on these because these actually don't have any, that's just the, the, the stubby, sticky out bit. The actual drive's in this bit here. So if, if these splines wear out, then you'll lose drive. Uh, or the start of wear is the clunk, that's the clunk. You can tell, you can even, it's the same sound as when you set off and you've got a clunk. So you can tell it's the actual clunk for the transmission or the, 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 the drivetrain. So if these splines where you lose drive, so some people think, well, I've got a broken half shaft because I lost my drive. Um, it might not be a broken half shaft, it might be actually broken splines, which are here. And of course, the splines on the other end of the final drive, which are down there. So there's two ends of splines and you could have a, a, a 10 spline, uh, drive shaft or 24. This is a 24 because it's got lots of little uh, splines in it. This is a 24 spline uh, drive shaft. So what I've got to do, I've got to get a pair of circlip pliers on here, which I haven't got, so I've got to go down to Machine Mart and buy them. Pair of circlip pliers on there, take this drive flange off, then take the brake caliper off, which is four bolts. I think they're, they're on the back there. I think they're 5 sixteens. Uh, sorry, 5 eighths, I think they are. So take the, uh, the split pins out of here, take the brake pads out, take the, the caliper off, and then start and on this uh, tie rod, 
<clears throat> I don't I need a blooming ball joint splitter there because that's got a ball joint in it. So take that off and then I'll finally be able to get out uh, my drive shafts and CV joints after I've taken the stub axle off, which is inside this bit here. And then I'll be able to get the diff off. So I'll have the whole of this side of the axle. I'll have to do the other side as well, of course. It's quite a big job and it's quite messy because there's lots of blooming grease inside here. And I've emptied the uh, final drive of oil anyway. That was black as you like. In fact, I'll show you it. This is the oil in the, in the final drive. You can tell this is broken down. It probably hasn't been changed in 30 years. It, I mean, that's broken down oil. That's not, that's not serviceable oil because oil doesn't go that black unless it's um, worn out. So the oil is quite important in these, uh, you know, in these farm drives. And that's my IKEA um, roasting tin drip tray. I like them because they're stainless steel and they're quite good. So there's our job so far. Um, I've got about uh, a little bit of the way through it. I'm going to take a break now, but it's um, I'm, at least I'm getting down to where the clunk is. I'm, I'm kind of getting closer and closer. And while you've got the Land Rover in, in bits like this, you might as well replace that drive shaft has got internal splines on uh, where am i that drive has got internal splines on and these are external splines so these mate together so and these aren't very expensive so you might as well if you're doing the cv joint and the, the drive shaft you might as well do this that cover as well so you've got all three components done um put the right grease and oil in obviously and then if you're renewing the diff or uh, i'm going to rebuild this diff because it's only a crown wheel uh, sorry final drive I'm going to re, uh, renew the crown wheel probably because I think that's where the, where it's coming from. I don't know yet, but if it is and I've got it off on the bench, I might as well actually do it. So anyway, that's the job on the front axle so far. Um, if you've got any questions, by all means, comment on the video. So it's going to stay up on the axle stands. And I've noticed the MOT failure for last, for last year was just down here. Look, this is a bit of an extra. That little joint there, the rubber split on the joint, so... I've got an MOT failure there, because that, that, that is definitely an MOT failure. So just behind the, uh, you know, the sump guard, I've got a little split on the rubber. I'll just try and show you. So this rubber there is split. Now any MOT inspector will notice that. So I've got to split this. This is the bottom of the, is this the bottom of the steering box. I think it is. Yeah, it's the bottom of the steering box. And, and also I've noticed the steering box is blooming leaking as well. So there's oil all over there. So the bottom seal on the steering box is probably leaking as well. So we've got quite a bit of work to do. And <clears throat> that'll need a ball joint splitter as well. I don't think there's a grease point. I'm just going to feel. Yeah, there's no grease point on that either. So normally the grease points, I'll show you where the grease points are. The grease points on, on ball joints are normally there. That's the grease point. And you can just get a handheld grease gun to grease those up. And they, they, they last for absolutely ages. So that's been gone quite a long time, probably. Um, <clears throat> so I'll have to change that as well. So that's, that's definitely an MOT failure. So we're cracking on.